uh, why does the frog leave? He leaves because uh, he is afraid of his predator. He is afraid of his enemy. And as a defensive action, he just jumps a few feet. Should we be doing that because we are afraid of our competitor? Should we not be pole vaulting? The size of the pole is the size of your aspiration. I am really overwhelmed. Uh, Honorable President, Ajit, Ajit families, Ajit friends, I don't know how to thank you for uh, uh, making this evening possible. I'm quite sure this will go down as one of the most memorable evenings of my life. And Ashok, I remember our conversation on telephone as soon as I uh, got your message and then the information that you sent on what you do and this inspiring motto. Right? In fact, it should be a nation's motto, you know, Ajit hai, Abhit hai. I think that's, that's so inspiring, very frankly. If each of the 1.35 billion of us say Ajit hai, Abhit hai, this will be a, a sort of a, a incredible uh, sort of nation. So thank you very much for making me uh, part of uh, this uh, evening. Uh, the topic I have chosen, as you can see, is reinventing India as a leading innovation uh, nation. Uh, the key word is reinventing. Why? Because India was always a very innovative nation. Okay, And leadership is extremely important. India cannot be a follower. It has to be a leader. It has to show to the rest of the world what... Uh, 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 not only we do, but what uh, others can uh, uh, do and uh, follow. Are you able to see the next slide? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Yes. So if you look at uh, going back a little bit, uh, uh, the uh, decade, uh, I mean, the century that is gone by, I'm taking what Jen Nalikar had said in his book, 2003, and we can look back at pride, uh, with pride, you know, Ramanujan's uh, mathematics in 20s is still puzzling. Uh, the scholars in Oxford and Cambridge, Meghna Saha's ionization equation, uh, father of stellar astrophysics, SN Bose particle statistics, Boson, Bose Einstein statistics, CV Raman's uh, 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 Nobel Prize winning work, uh, and GN Ramchandran. Uh, you know, the triple helix structure. In fact, you should have got a Nobel Prize for that uh, far more complex structure than the double helix of uh, uh, DNA. And then I have kept a gap here. These are the first 50 years, by the way. And then after that, of course, the, uh, what he puts down is uh, what uh, uh, Atomic Energy Commission did in terms of nuclear power, green revolution, uh, space program, in fact, I would say space, defense, and atomic energy, all three have done sort of a remarkable work. And then finally, I'm very proud to say he talks about uh, the CSR transformation to which uh, uh, the uh, reference was uh, made uh, uh, a little uh, earlier. So this is... Uh, now, what do you find special about this? I think, first of all, you will find that in the first 50 years, there are individual contributions but world class. And in the second, these are collective contributions of the nation supported by the government towards a mission. Okay? So this has been the change. Now, if you look at one of the programs, for example, space program, we all know how we started. November 21, 1963, India launched its first rocket. And where are we now? On March 1, uh, the, earlier this year, uh, Indian PSLV rocket launches Brazilian uh, satellite, the first commercial mission. Uh, look at, for example, ISRO launching a record of 104 satellites on a single rocket. And uh, of the 104, 101 were foreign satellites to serve the international uh, customers. If you just see the Mars Orbiter mission, for example, India became the first country to enter Mars orbit in the first attempt and at a record low cost of 74 million as against US mission costing 671 uh, 
uh, million um, uh, dollars. And in the same way, one can talk about what defense has been um, uh, able to do. I've been a great admirer of Dr. APJ Kalam, uh, Abdul Kalam, he has been a great friend. He has been uh, iconic and the, his predecessors and the current leadership, fantastic. In the same way in nuclear energy, I will not have a chance to go through this. So I stand here as a proud Indian, admiring what we have been able to do. Now, if you see our uh, science technology policy movements, we started with science policy statement in this policy statement in 1983. 83, we had the technology policy resolution. Then 2003, we brought science and technology policy together. I remember I was the DG of CSR at that time. Uh, 2011, science, technology, and innovation policy uh, was brought in together. And of course, now we are talking about Startup India, Atal Innovation Mission, and so on and so forth. And there's a new science, technology, innovation policy draft under discussion. So you can quite clearly see, we started with mere science, then went to science and technology, and then now we have gone to science, technology, and uh, innovation. Now, if you see this uh, Global Innovation Index, which is uh, uh, for some 230 odd nations, and if you see our ranking and look at uh, 2015 onwards, uh, you will see we were 81. And from there, we have gradually moved up to 46. Of course, this is a matter to be proud of. But I have written here a but. And the but is because look at the way China has moved. They were 29. Now they are 12, okay? So we should be proud of what we are uh, doing, but can we do better? Can we have, because aspirations are our possibilities. Can we raise our aspirations to a very high uh, 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 level and move much faster, much further ahead of the rest of the world? And this is the crux of my talk today, all right? How do we become a leading nation? At 46, we are not a leading nation. How can we? And that has to do, as I will argue out, with not just the power of our mind, but the power of our mindsets, our ability uh, to think differently, to think ahead, uh, uh, to take risks and invent and innovate. Uh, my book, uh, Leapfrogging to Pole Vaulting, came up in 2019. And uh, I'll explain to you what the meaning of leapfrogging to pole vaulting is, because that is where we are talking about much higher aspirations. But what is very important is that when we do that, the subtitle of this is very important. It is creating the magic of radical yet sustainable transformation. India needs transformation, but it has to be sustainable. India needs uh, transformation, but it can't be just incremental, moving so slowly. It has to be radical and it has to be rapid. How can we do that? Now, this I'm very proud to say won the Business Book of the Year Award in 2019. And uh, I must acknowledge uh, uh, Ravi Pandit, uh, my uh, uh, colleague, uh, with whom I had co authored this particular uh, 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 book. Now, the uh, question that you have is that how did you think of the title? Well, as was mentioned, I've been chairman of Reliance Innovation uh, um, Council. And uh, uh, Reliance believes in uh, uh, growth uh, is life. And they always look at innovation as a way of life. But if you put these two together, then it becomes innovation-led growth. And as you can see, it is not just growth, exponential growth. Now, you can't do incremental innovation and have exponential growth. You have to do disruptive innovation, game-changing innovation to lead to uh, uh, so And I remember once Mukesh and I were talking, uh, 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 you know, about uh, the way forward. And in uh, some instance, he said, Doc, we must leave frog. So I said, hold on, Mukesh. Uh, why does the frog leap? He leaps because uh, he's afraid of his predator. He is afraid of his enemy. And as a defensive action, he just jumps a few feet. Should we be doing that? Because we are afraid of our competitor. Should we not be pole vaulting? The size of the pole is the size of your aspiration. Right? And the benchmark that you set up, you can keep on making it higher and higher and higher and higher. 
we loved it and we created what is called as uh, uh, a mission uh, uh, that was called beyonders beyonders means young leaders who will be capable of thinking beyond the dreams of possibilities and the idea was create 100 innovation leaders will whole world and not just leave from and give them massive opportunities through growth initiatives but what is very important are these five points first setting unreasonable goals which look impossible so making impossible possible become their goal second always challenge conventional wisdom third it is very easy to get extraordinary people to do extraordinary things can we get ordinary people to do extraordinary things fourth suffer from divine discontent whatever you achieve is not good enough and also don't get bogged down by adversity but convert it into an opportunity and most importantly create an exponential value so we started uh, creating these 100 pole vaulting innovation leaders and have they been able to pole vault now if you see in terms of what uh, we were and after jio came where we are in terms of uh, mobile data consumption in terms of million gb per month you can see that in terms of mobile data usage we pole vaulted from number 1 uh, to number 1 from the 155th position we did not leave frog to 155th to 100 but frog the first position more importantly if you just see the way it was accomplished there was a lot of innovation involved in this if you look at when you come into the market how much time does it take to reach 50 million users telephone took 50 years mobile 12 years youtube 4 years facebook 3 years twitter 2 years reliance jio did it in 83 days and believe me there was a lot of innovation that was involved in that. but Finally, it is not about pole vaulting. Are you changing the game? Yes. If you look at before Jio, four G multi phone was available for three hundred dollars. Now twenty three. Data per GB cost it was five dollars to one cent, and voice one point six dollar to zero. You know, in India we used to be very proud of uh, this uh, uh, miss call. Miss call is uh, something that I'm not for because miss call. you are not spending anything of your own but the telephone company is using when you do a kind of a miss call why should you? the idea is to get a free call all right you can have it legitimately through the use of uh, technology so this is transformational i would say now the uh, basic issue that was raised was how do we assure uh, as we were writing uh, this book you know pole vaulting somebody asked me uh, how do we assure that there is a sure success how do you make sure that you don't break your bones so if you go to the uh, the, uh, the chapter 3 of our book you will find and this is what india should be looking at this is the assured innovation framework this should be characteristics of the innovation that we i think first and most important is affordable extremely important now if it is affordable of course obviously it becomes uh, scalable but it has to be also sustainable sustainable on three counts first is the economics part of it it has to have it should not depend upon subsidies governments go subsidies go it has to be a stand alone uh, a business model the second is environment if it is not green you will not survive green growth is the only growth third society society must accept it for example society doesn't accept uh, 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 nuclear energy society does not accept uh, 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 let's say onshore wind a society doesn't accept uh, gmos that does not mean the society is right but basically when there is a resistance to that there is a challenge next is universal in a sense it has to be user friendly the customer that we talk about then it has to be resilient and uh, in terms of technology it has to be Uh, uh excellent the cutting edge technology and finally distinct you know and that is where uh, the patterns uh, uh, come in because uh, the reason one drives for patterns is that uh, non obviousness utility novelty 
are essential for uh, granting a patent. So there is no point in India keep on doing uh, me too and follow up. We have to become sort of leaders. That was the assured innovation framework. And we showed that assured is not static but dynamic matrix. It changes with time. It is fully quantifiable. For example, sustainability. It depends a lot upon the regulation. Sometimes regulation can change in such a way that you are out of the window and you can go. So our book actually shows, as a matter of fact, technologies which were highly successful at a point in time. And if you look at the assured matrix, they failed somewhere. For example, Napster, you know, it uh, was voice free and had 80 million users. Voice free, of course, it is affordable. Scalable, yes, 80 million customers, but sustainable, no. Why? Because the society of musicians said, you can't download my music for free. And from 80 million, they came down to zero. Look at Blackberry, for example. Okay. Uh, some of uh, my generation would remember Blackberry. You know, it was the most powerful machine. It had 50 million customers plus. But it was essentially an email machine. And when it came to uh, the, the sort of new innovations, like the touch uh, the, becoming uh, the predominant part of playing with the screen, uh, they were still sticking uh, to... Uh, 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 you know, their old uh, uh, technologies, including the keypads. And from 50 million, they came to zero. So I think it is very important that even great companies like Google, they fail if they don't meet the assured test. For example, you can say Google Glass, it was a failure. It was distinctive. It was excellent. But it was not affordable, very expensive. And therefore, it was not scalable. It was not universal, not user-friendly, because when you are uh, using a Google Glass, you do not know whether you are uh, 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 recording the conversation. If you enter a film theater, you did not know whether you were going to download the film and so on and so forth. It didn't exist. But you look at our Indian innovation, for example, Jio. Is it affordable? Yes. You saw that. Four rupees per GB plus uh, zero wise. Scalable? Yes. 450 million customers. Sustainable? Yes. It is making profit. It is doing well as well as doing good. Universal user-friendly, yes, you can see both these ladies coming from completely different strata using it. Rapid, yes, I showed to you how fast it has moved. Excellent, yes, the state-of-the-art technology 4G LP and distinctive, yes, in many, many different ways. So therefore, Indian innovation has to meet these assured uh, matrix. And I'm very proud to say that this matrix is being used across the country now. Uh, in fact, when Honorable Prime Minister created uh, this uh, drinking water mission, I was made the chairman of the standing committee to select the best technologies. And we started using this matrix for screening. And it's incredible the way uh, it has helped. Then it has gone to the corporates. They are using it for determining the, uh, the sort of investments. In fact, the Bombay Management Association has now created an award called Best Assured Enterprise of the Year. Uh, and uh, the first award went to uh, Baiju's, uh, who have been uh, doing very well. So this matrix is sustaining. I think the basic issue that was made earlier, a little earlier, uh, and uh, Ashok also mentioned about that. From idea to impact, how do you move? India is a land of ideas. India is a land of inventions. But how do you finally move the product in the marketplace? And this matrix, becomes extremely uh, uh, important. Now, our nation has shown that it can pour more. For example, world's fastest and largest financial inclusion through JAM, Jandan Yojana, Aadhaar, and Mobile. Okay? Now, technological innovation, technological innovation is only one, but along with that, there's a business model innovation. There's a system delivery innovation. There's a workflow innovation. There is a policy innovation and so on. And this is a terrific combination. There was a technological innovation. There was a system delivery innovation. There was a workflow innovation. And there was a policy innovation, uh, the Jandan Yojana and so on. And you can see what difference it has made during the pandemic. Now. What's faster and larger jump in mobile data consumption? You just saw that. We pole vaulted from uh, the 155th position to the first position. What's fastest and larger deployment of LEDs? You know, within seven years, the cost of LEDs was brought down by a factor of 10. How? By demand aggregation, 
uh, putting it uh, together and then again creating the other systems. And from 0.8% penetration, it is 88% today. All right, just in seven years. That's a record. In fact, I am uh, a member of the jury of Queen Elizabeth Prize of Engineering. And uh, this is a 1 million pound eight crore. And this is considered the Nobel Prize in Engineering. And last year it went to LEDs. And one of the powerful points I made you know, during the contribution was that technology must be one which should be uh, the, you know, transforming not just the developed world, but the developing world. And I gave this particular example. I'm not saying that they won because of that, but these are the possibilities. What's fastest and largest real-time digital payment transformation, for example, we have so very quickly moved. I think the central point we want to make is that if we act as Team India, if we uh, the sort of put our forces uh, together, might together, we can make the difference. And I suppose each one of you listening today can see what is it that we can do individually, institutionally, as our enterprise by which India can pull forward. You know, I'm getting old. I don't have much time at hand. I like to see things happen in my own lifetime, just as all of you would. And therefore, this becomes very important. So I think what I'm basically talking about to become a leading uh, the innovation nation is forget about following. We were following and fast following. Yeah, fast following. Anytime any new drug came up anywhere, within 18 months, we would copy it and uh, create and that was important because that created the generic industry. But from fast following now, we have to become leaders. We have to become the first, not copying molecules, but creating our own molecules and not just leapfrogging, but polvorting. One would like to see this change uh, uh, come into play. Now you might say uh, the enterprises have given the examples of the reliances and others, et cetera, can go and inspire polvorting. Of course, I will tell you from my own experiments in the government, in the public domain, when I was the director of National Chemical Laboratory, I created a kite flying fund. What is kite flying? The chance of success may be one in 100, but I will support it. Of course, I kept only 1% of the budget, otherwise I would have lost my job. But the fact that it does not matter, this crazy director is supporting, risk-taking, even if the idea has one in 100, made a difference and people came out with some breakthrough. When I went to CSR, I didn't want to call it kite flying fund because the parliament was just one kilometer away and <laughs> questions on uh, how government funds are being used for kite flying. So I got it, it's a new idea. And it is incredible. The idea of spin computers which Chandra Kumar came up with and created uh, the, basically uh, two US patents at that time. But we did not have the innovation ecosystem to take it forward. Then public private partnership, I created this new millennium Indian technology leadership initiative. This is the key word. This is the title of my lecture. You know, and in order to do that, you have to take risks. So we gave grand challenges. So, for example, how do we position those parts? India had operated always in the safe region, where markets were certain and the technology was certain. Because we were reverse engineering, we were copying for a new product. I said nothing to it. We move in a continent where the markets are not sure as well as the technology is not known. That was a daring effort, by the way. And I must uh, uh, say the way the government supported this was incredible. I would not have time to uh, talk about what uh, we were able to do, but it is possible. I think that's the point. And of course, the corporates are fueling Indian private sector. I mean, for example, uh, Ratan Tata, there is a very interesting case, by the way. He had invited me to address uh, uh, his senior executives in Goa. And I remember uh, seeing at that time uh, about, uh, you know, a friend uh, from US who had come and he was saying, we don't hang people who make mistakes, but we do hang people uh, who don't take risks. And what do you do in India? I said, we hang people who take risks. And there was a big laughter, but there is one person who did not laugh, that was Ratan Tata. And Ratan, during tea, asked me, um, Mr. Kya, what you say is right. Tell me how I can bring that spirit of taking risk. So I said, uh, very simple, uh, uh, you honor those who had an audacious idea, tried it, but failed. 
tried it but failed. And that is where the Daring to Try program actually came and uh, became a big success. Uh, Mahindra created Dare to Dream, and I just now told you about plans beyond this, but we require more and more of that, both the government as well as the private sector taking these risks. Now, we saw, I mean, you saw my unhappiness that we are only at 46 and so on and so forth, but you know, we have to acknowledge that there are certain things in which we are undisputed leaders. And the kind of indicators that Global Innovation Index uses, by the way, and I'm on their international advisory board and I have this constant quarrel with them, basically for the last seven years, eight years, that sometimes you measure something that doesn't count and uh, you count something that uh, does not make a difference. Whereas in this particular case, India has changed the directory uh, of innovation and that is inclusive innovation. If you see the frugal innovation, inclusive innovation, Gandhian innovation, reverse innovation, these are the words that did not exist earlier and they have become now commonplace. So let me tell you about how this has happened actually. In 2008, I remember I was honored with Australian uh, Academy Fellowship and uh, I was the first one in 34 years. So I said, since they honored me, they don't know enough about India because I could list out 100 people who are better than me. So I said, I must give them something which uh, they will, uh, uh, it will have a typical Indian flavor. So the title of my talk was provocatively uh, Gandhian engineering. And of course I said, you know, computer engineering, you know, mechanical engineering, you know, metallurgical, but you don't know Gandhian engineering. What is Gandhian engineering? So I took two tenets of Gandhi, Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi. First is, he had said, earth provides enough to satisfy everyone's need, but not everyone's greed. That means use your resources more and more carefully and get more from this. And the other one was, I would prize every invention of science made for the benefit for all. That means do it for more and more and more people. Combining the two, it becomes more from less for more. And this Gandhian engineering, getting more performance from less resource for more people, uh, became the MLM mantra, by the way, and became very, very popular. And this is like getting uh, access equality despite income inequality. Look at the income inequality, 1,000 is to one, but access equality is one is to one. So that became possible. And this mantra, I started spreading around the world. Late CK Prahlad was a great thought leader. This was his last paper that he and I wrote in, CK, uh, in Harvard Business Review. Innovation's holy grail, MLM, more from less for more. And this is now cited as among the 10 must read papers in innovation. Not only that, after this paper appeared, World Economic Forum picked up the theme immediately and they created a special session on more from this for more. And then, uh, of course, I was giving examples of how India is doing it. Like, for example, high quality hepatitis B vaccine, 40 times cheaper, not 40%, by the way. Okay. High and, yeah, and used uh, by uh, 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 UNICEF, so high quality is assured. High quality cataract eye surgery, for example, 100 times cheaper. Not because the costs are low of doing things, but the way it was done, the workflow innovation uh, that Aryavidya Shala did, uh, tremendous. Then high quality open heart surgery, Narayana Udalia, for example, great Devi safety, 20 times cheaper, but quality comparable to the, uh, the sort of New York surgeons and high quality artificial food 300 times cheaper than it's dead for food. In fact, I don't have time, but normally I show a film where somebody wearing a dead food food does a kilometer in four minutes, 30 seconds. And then I ask the audience, how many of you can do? And not even 1%, 2% hands actually go off. These are the kind of innovations that India has done. Okay, and one is very proud. So this message kept on spreading uh, this, uh, for example, uh, this talk of mine has been translated in 23 languages. And uh, I remember uh, going around the world as a matter of fact. As you know, the journey began in Canberra, Melbourne. And then I was invited to speak here. And in Washington, I remember talking to World Bank. And they immediately understood its importance. And they created a $55 million inclusive innovation program for uh, Vietnam. I remember going to Asian Development Bank in Manila, for example, 
and they started creating programs around that because they knew it's good for the people because it is for more and more people, not them select few. I remember I was invited uh, to uh, European Union uh, addressing some 2000 scientists and they included this program in their horizon 2020. Uh, Beijing, China is way ahead of us, we agree, but China accepts that when it comes to inclusive innovation, we are ahead of them. And I remember uh, uh, they invited me uh, as a World Bank expert to create an inclusive innovation uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, strategy uh, sort of uh, for them. Uh, the other places that one went to, uh, uh, Colombo and uh, Cape Town, Pretoria, Medellin, there was this uh, World Association of Industrial Technology Research Organizations. So this message was spread kind of all around, and it is amazing the kind of impact that it has had. Because inequality is not our problem, by the way. Inequality is all around the world. America has inequality. China has massive inequality, by the way. It just does not show because they don't, uh, they hide so many things, basically. But this is very, very critical. But then they will say, you're spreading the word around, but what are you doing? My own CSR, my own CSR had been involved in uh, uh, Gandhi engineering in a big way over a period of time. But I myself said, I must do something. CSR is still government money. Let me do something. And in my mother's name, I created this Anjani Mashilkar Inclusive Innovation Award which was powered by Gandhian engineering. This is the 11th year of the award. But I'm going to take you to some two or three awardees to actually illustrate to you as to what we uh, really uh, can do, which can benefit the society at large. Look at uh, this Mishkin Ingawale. You know, we always take pride by saying, are we are following the best practice. I don't like the best practice. Why? Because you are following somebody else's. I would like us for India to be leading to create our practice, which will be the next practice, which can become the best practice for others. So this award was just kept for next practice, not for best practice. I wanted young people to be thinking ahead and just see uh, hemoglobin test, you know, normally you will take a blood sample using needles. He says, I will not use needles. Cost was 150 rupees. He said, I will do it in 10 rupees. Okay. And you can see he created this touch. You can see the initial plant. He led that thing. And you can see the kind of technologies he has used photoplethoscography, spectrophotometry, advanced software for photon scattering. Now, here is the point making high technology work for the rich, very easy. Making low technology work for the poor, very easy. Making high technology work for the poor, very difficult. And that's what he was able to do. And then, as I said, if this became the best practice, he created it. his own next practice. He displaced this to create this because this was so advanced that this captures the picture of a conjunctiva. You just look into the camera and you know your hemoglobin levels. Our young boys, I'm very proud to tell you, in late 20s are able to create something like this. And the society benefits at last. Then this uh, particular award that Meer Shah got, young man, Best practice, what is the best practice for breast cancer? Biopsy, mammography, painful, expensive. No, he says, I will create dollar one non-invasive screening. Ultra portable, accurate, minimal training, wireless, cloud connected, and instant results. Now you say, this looks like a toy. Is it remaining in the laboratory? I'm no, sorry. It is going to 25 plus countries. They are partnered with GE Healthcare, for example, and they are going around the world. Indian innovation can make a difference around the world. Look at uh, 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 Rahul Dasugi, for example, you know, whom we gave the award. Uh, by the way, uh, here is my wife, uh, Vaishali. Here is my great guru, Professor Anil Gupta, uh, by the way. Uh, we work on grassroots innovation. And uh, I call him a modern uh, Gandhi, by the way, because he believes that everyone is someone. And everyone can uh, innovate, uh, you know, it's, it's tremendous. So he was the chief guest and uh, General Nanikar. I uh, am president of uh, uh, International Longevity Center in India, uh, which looks at the poor and the old. You know, uh, being old is a problem, but being poor and old is a huge problem. So this is a, uh, a organization dedicated to it. And what did you do? What is the standard practice when you want an ECG? 
you lie down, there will be 12 leads around your chest, and you'll take it. What did he say? He said, no, I'll create the next practice, which is something that is a handheld device. And you can see this is in your hand. All that you do is to put your two thumbs for 15 seconds and put uh, this device around your heart, one, two, three, 15 seconds each, below your heart, 15 seconds each, and within three minutes, you have it, uh, if you have downloaded an app called Sanket, the ECG is in your hand. Now imagine a poor old lady at the middle of night in a village gets heartache, pain in the heart. And then what would you do? You would put her in a bullet car, or if you are better off on a motorcycle, or if you are better off in a jeep and take her a few kilometers. No, it's not necessary. It's so simple, so easy to basically do. He has sold two that devices in eight countries right now. And I'm very proud to see this kind of uh, thing. This was Sanket 1.0, a personal 12 lead ECG, and this is uh, this version. And you can buy it on Amazon. Uh, the yeah. So this is uh, capable of taking the single lead sick. The other innovation, 2019, was connected with Mahatma Gandhi's 150 years uh, birth centenary. And here says sanitation is more important than political freedom. And you saw the uh, plight of manual scavengers. In fact, the Supreme Court had banned the government by saying that sewers are gas chambers where manual scavengers are sent to die. Do something about it. And you saw this uh, kind of horrible statistics, one manual scavenging death every five days. And these are young kids from college. What they said is that, why should there be a man in the hole? There should be a machine in the hole. Man should be outside. And they created, as a matter of fact, a robot, which can be operated with a simple user interface. Now, the moment you say, oh my God, if machine is going to replace the man, you'll ask a standard question. What happens to his job? What happens to his livelihood? What they did was that they, uh, they had this manual scavenger trained as a robot operator. That's why I say access to dignity. Just imagine this young man had children, they are in school, Somebody comes and asks them, uh, what does your father do? They will put their head down and say manual scavenger. No. Now they will put their head up and say he is uh, uh, actually a robot operator. And I'm very happy the government took note of this innovation in 2019. And in 2020, uh, I will not go into the detail of lots of things that happened in between, uh, how this, was, this became an important trigger. But now a bill is coming up, which is... Uh, proposing to completely mechanize sewer cleaning. How important it is. I always say, science must solve, technology must transform, and innovation must impact. This is a brilliant example of technology transformation. The last one that I like to show is ICU beds shortage, as you know. And by the way, I want to deliberately show you this, because we are always critical of India. But look at this. I'll read out for you. The situation here is dire. Every minute, 10 people test positive for COVID-19. Every eight minutes, someone dies. Ambulances circle for hours, unable to find ERs that can accept patients. Hospitals are running out of oxygen. ICU capacity is at zero. Patients die in hard work. You think this is India? No, this was Los Angeles. And of course, when we had uh, the second wave, we had the challenge of ICU beds. So last year, I created a special award for those who actually contribute to uh, uh, this challenge of COVID. And young Mudit uh, Dandavate created this, where he said, any bed, you should be able to uh, 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 convert it into a stand-up ICU within five minutes. Okay, And how do you do that? Well, you use this IoT sensors, basically. And there are seven parameters that are measured, which have 98.4% accuracy, and they are actually transmitted. No maintenance, no consumables, no prior technical expertise, and no contact. Okay, A nurse, which would monitor 10 patients, can now monitor 100. And this was used uh, um, across uh, India, for example, uh, during the second wave. 4,000 plus beds were converted, 10,000 patients monitored and 25,000 nursing hours saved because we were falling short of nurses. But most important part was that it uses AI, artificial intelligence. And therefore, 
when a doctor takes a round in a 100 bed hospital they go in that order no now we identify those four who need to be moved to icu very very quickly a young mudit dandavate in india has done it don't you feel proud one after the other these four five examples that i have shown you and i'm very happy that this is now becoming a national awards now the uh, gandhian young technology innovation award you can see our president here our former minister of science and technology our great guru uh, professor anil gupta and ashutosh uh, uh, sharma so i'm very happy that this is getting now institutionalized so as to say uh, uh, next point i will finish in uh, uh, 10 minutes education disseminates known knowledge research converts money into knowledge but innovation converts knowledge into money so therefore our institutions must be able to do all three and most important is education it starts all from there there is a discussion uh, about which is the most uh, powerful equation that has been created uh, uh, ever and somebody said newton's you know force equal to mass into acceleration somebody said no einstein e equal to mc square e is energy m is mass and c is velocity of light i was sitting quiet there i said none of these then they asked me what is it i said the most powerful is e equal to m and they were confused what is e what is m i said education is future now you would say that uh, this is true uh, but do we realize the society realizes this yes of course it does look at this lady how poor she is she doesn't even have proper dairy look at where she is staying but she is preparing her daughter for uh, the school she realizes the importance of equation e equal to but then you would say still it doesn't uh, prove you you are a scientist you have given the equation you must prove it i'll prove it to you the proof comes on 17 march 2000 what happened on that day kya naran let kya naran and our president honored me with a padma bhushan and also honored ratan tata with padma bhushan he said but you will say they that doesn't who equal to it. i'll tell you why kya naran was born in a very poor family he used to walk several kilometers to go to school his parents were so poor that he would stand outside the class and take note because they didn't have money to pay his tuition fees and the miracle happened he got tata scholarship and the rest is history he went on to become president my life was something similar i was born in a very poor family in a village called mashel in goa my father died when i was 6 my mother was ill it she brought me to mumbai she would do many of work to bring me up two meals a day was a challenge there are a number of nights when i got hungry i walked barefoot until i was 12 i studied under street lights in ssc secondary school certificate exam i stood 11 among 135000 students in maharashtra state and yet i was going to leave school and take up a job and then a miracle happened i got tata scholarship so you can see a tata scholar only another tata scholar with the padma bhushan but at the same time a tata scholar only tata himself with a patent if this does not to e equal to f what else will do that now the challenge is and why i'm bringing this in the innovation lecture is that you have to see now how innovation is going to play a critical role previously this mashankar who got 60 rupees per month that was good enough for him he could buy the textbook and so on. but today's mashankar will have to have digital access because online learning 1.6 billion children went out of school in 100 days online learning became the norm but one third of them don't have access that means there is no future for them because there is no education because there is no online learning so how do we deal with the challenge of digital deprivation and you see these sorry headlines you know disastrous consequence of digital deprivation of poor children in assam with no smart this was june huh, last year this happened and it's not just assam punjab just month of june huh, i'm giving you this you know assam 15 year old 
Maharashtra in Satara, I remember. West Bengal, Kerala, committing suicide. Why? Because they did not have this process. Then the question that we have to ask now, is that a country which becomes Mars orbital mission the first time, does this in defense, does it in atomic energy? Can you not produce affordable digital access? Answer is yes. We had created an Akash $35 tablet. Where is it? We, it did not uh, get into the hands of uh, the students. We had created uh, this computer, uh, uh, for example. In fact, computer was considered the most significant innovation. And you'll be proud to hear this, this came from Karnataka. It came from Indian Institute of Science. The, uh, Bruce Sterling, the New York Times magazine, had said the most significant innovation in computer technology in 2001 was not Apple's gleaming titanium PowerBook G4 or Microsoft Windows XP. It was computer, a netlink, radically simple, portable computer. You should have conquered the world with this. What happened? What was missing was bold and innovative public procurement policy. Because whenever such innovations come up, the government comes into play, places an order for 10,000. Maybe you get a market feedback, you improve the design, uh, create a business model, and then you move. All around the world, these exist. So therefore, actually, um, at the instance of Amitabh Khan, I created this innovative public procurement policy for fueling assured inclusive innovation. And I hope the government will uh, sort of use it. But in uh, states, uh, individual states, we are using it, like Master State Innovation Society, I'm the co-chairman, and we are using it now. I hope it goes all across. And uh, not only that, uh, recently I submitted my report on um, the NEP uh, 2020, how do you uh, sort of uh, create uh, um, uh, the rethink, reimagine, reinvent higher education in Maharashtra. We presented to Chief Minister, and we have recommended free digital access to all students. Roti, Kapra, Makan, and Internet has to become the order of the day as far as, uh, and it's a fundamental right, as a matter of fact, uh, for, for, for the students. The last part will be that uh, we have been talking about pole vaulting, but remember, get into the fundamentals. This lady is going to generate kinetic energy, okay, which actually is going to propel her. But many times there are speed breakers that come in the way. Some speed breakers are because we don't want to take risk. Any new idea, you'd say too risky. Suppose it fails, impossible, never done before. What do you mean by never done before? Did we interact in the manner that we are interacting today, 10 years ago? Was it possible? Was Zoom there? No, we are doing it. If somebody has tried it already. And if your English is good, you are scared, you say, let me play devil's advocate. But it means the same thing, I'm scared. So therefore, when I give this talk to the corporates, I say, put all these five outside your boardroom and say, anybody who utters any of these, just throw them out. Otherwise, you will not make a difference. And the common speed breakers, reducing the kinetic energy, are, of course, complacency. You are in the marketplace. You are doing well. right? Cynicism, risk aversion, sometimes vested interest outside fields, bureaucracy. I don't have to talk about this in India. And, of course, Restrictive regulations can be sort of speed. Related. We must. So therefore, for an idea to make an impact, finally, all the speed breakers must actually uh, go. And I would say it is all about leadership now. We have to create pole vaulting leaders. They will find opportunities where others see nothing. They will convert problems into an opportunity. They will set quantum goals. They will drive discontinuity. And they will bet on risky ideas. And I'm very happy now that uh, our Honorable Prime Minister started this movement on Startup India. And uh, I would say that let's get into the fundamentals that a great startup will depend upon talent, technology, but most importantly, trust. And here's a story about this. So this is a tripod. If one of them is missing, it will fall. Okay. Let me tell you a story. See, I was on the External Research Advisory Board of, uh, uh, of, of, of Microsoft. And I remember once we had a dinner come discussion, uh, Bill Gates had come to Delhi. I was there, Nandan Nilakani was there. 
uh, Arun Mahala was there, Anand Mahindra, and so on. And then uh, actually, Bill Gates told us a very interesting story. You know, he said that he was invited to give the commencement lecture in Harvard, and uh, uh, when he was, uh, and he narrated the story, he, and he said, "I'm the most successful dropout uh, from Harvard," which he was, of course. And then he told us a story about how, when he was young, just 18, 19, there was a company in Albuquerque which was going to manufacture hardware, and he said, "I will give you software." And he said. I half thought that they will keep the phone down. And 18 year old in the early days of computer offering software, you know what they said? They said, wait, we are not ready at it. Come after a month. And what Bill Gates told me, uh, told us was interesting. He said, thank God they said, come after a month, because I did not have the software that I was offering. See, they had trust in him and he had trust in himself. That is what we need most importantly in India. And I'm very happy to see there is a new vibrancy in India startup ecosystem now. We see investments uh, in the first six months have been $27.1 billion, 51 unicorns, which are a billion dollar, 32 sunicorns, which can become unicorns within two years, 54 minicorns, 30 states and UTs have competing startup policies, like I mentioned, 623 districts have DPIIT recognized startups. And UPI plus RBI support for fintech startup is creating a revolution. That's wonderful. But let us remember that we have to have an ecosystem. The government with policies and schemes, and I must applaud the government, different governments, including Karnataka government, Kerala government, Maharashtra government, Union, uh, our central government, they're all coming out with policies and schemes. We are spreading the incubators and accelerators, angel investors. That becomes very, very uh, important. Venture capital. Venture capital has to become adventure capital. You know, it cannot be vulture capital. That is very, very important. Private equity, uh, stock market exchanges, the listing is happening. The corporates actually are looking at talent and technology. And I'm very happy to see that uh, uh, with mentors, advisors, if we build up this entire ecosystem, I see no reason why we can't. But most important is talent, technology, and trust. Trust is very, very important. So my wish list for India to become a leading innovation nation, we require revolution, not just innovation. We should not be just creating uh, products that are first to India, new to the world, not just to company or country. Unprecedented cost performance features, like I give several examples, entirely new products and services, and as I said, next practice, not just best practice. Uh, I remember getting this Jayadi Tata Corporate Leadership Award in 1998. That itself was innovation because I'm a scientist. And this, of course, I got for transforming CSR. That's a different matter altogether. And I remember at that time, innovation was not such a buzzword. And I had said, finally, 1999 should be the year where we should launch a powerful national innovation movement to propel us into the next millennium, the in India should not stand for imitation and inhibition. It must stand for innovation. The in IIT must stand for innovation. The in industry, the in CSR must stand for innovation. The in every individual Indian must stand for innovation. And I ended my lecture by saying that is only this innovative India that will signal to the rest of the world that we are not a hesitant nation unsure of our place in the new global order, but a confident one that is raring to go and be a leader in the community of nations. And finally, we must build an ecosystem, you know, comprising physical, intellectual, cultural constructs with critical innovation support systems, right from education research institutes to all these incubators, accelerators, etc. Government society, public procurement policies, IPR regime, balanced regulatory system, strategic design standards. And we have to talk about innovation led accelerated growth and accelerated inclusive growth. Inclusive growth. You know, and then we can become a leader uh, with assured innovation. And remember, then we have to move from discover to innovate to make in India. I'm not very fond of making India as in assembled in India. We must have innovate in India 
and make it easier. I like to end uh, finally because I'm 78. I've learned a lot by failing and learning. Uh, I thought for my student friends, because I understand there are a number of students, uh, I'll leave them with five mantra that I learned in Mara. The first is aspirations are your possibilities. Keep them high. But for you as well as for our society, our beloved nation, that's extremely important. Second is, you know, young people nowadays require, I mean, they ask for uh, uh, instant success. I want to assure them, like instant coffee, there is no instant success. I'm 78, but I do 24 into 7, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, and will do so till the last day of my life. The third, purpose, perseverance, and passion. Too early to quit. Winners are never quitters. Quitters are never winners. And you are bound to fail when you do something. But read fail, FAIL, as first attempt in learning. Your best guru is your last mistake. But as long as you don't repeat it. Remember that. The other one is when doors of opportunities uh, uh, don't open, you will keep on knocking. Don't do that. Create your own doors. I remember 1976 when I came back, I was trained in rheology and non newtonian fluid mechanics. In order to establish a lab, I needed Weisenberg rheology of nature. It will take two years. Country did not have foreign exchange, digital clearance, not manufactured in India. So that door could not open. I shifted my field. I said, what am I good at? This God has given me the brain, that equipment. I don't need to import it. I have it. And I went into modeling and simulation. And within five years, I got the SS Bhattanagar Prize, which is considered as the highest prize for uh, scientists up to 45. But supposing I kept on knocking on those doors and waited for two years, what would have happened? So create your own. And finally, no limit to human endurance, achievement, imagination, except the one you put on yourself. And I would like to uh, 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 you know, pay my uh, respects to my great guru, Professor Sena Rao, Bharat Ratna. And uh, uh, he has been in my inspiration. So let me tell you a little story and I will close. I remember I became FRS, Fellow of Royal Society. Now, scientists will know it is considered as a very high honor. In fact, when I became FRS, one fellow wrote to me, one fellow of Royal Society, enjoy it, because there are only two greater things that can happen in your life now. One is Nobel Prize. And secondly, death. One is certain, another one is uncertain. So, it's, uh, and there are only, uh, now there used to be three engineering scientists in 360 years. We have become fellows of Royal Society from India. My friend Rudam Narsimha passed away. He was a very, very great man. So he was one. And the remaining two are myself and Professor Sharma. It is so difficult to become one. Three in 360 years. So that was a high honor. And I called Professor Sienna Rao. I said, sir, I will become a scientist. I thought he will say something great. He said, he said no, not bad. <laughs> I got disappointed. Then another honor came, another honor came. Finally, National Academy of Inventors, I was the only one, not one of the three and all that. Still, he said, not bad. I, so I said, sir, what do I have to do to impress you? And what he said, I would like to leave that as a message. What he said at that time was, he said, Mr. Gary, you are climbing on a Ladder of excellence, which has no limits. Accepting the limit that you put on yourself. Think about it. What it means is that no matter what you achieve in life, you have to say my best is yet to come. And therefore my message, whether you are 18 or 80, is every day in the morning, give the last way of your life. You can say my best is yet to come. Not only for yourself, but for the nation. My best is yet to come. And maybe today is the day it will come. And if all of us, billion plus, do that, what a great nation we will create right up in the committee of nations, right up there, which is the place that India deserves. Thank you so much. Thank you.